Hello, Ashley here with hearthookhome.com and today we are going to learn how to do the Tunisian honeycomb stitch. This is just beautiful. It ends up making these little diamond looking shapes and they look like little honeycombs and they're gorgeous. And so we're going to learn this new stitch using our Tunisian crochet hooks. I've worked up a smaller swatch here so that we can um, look at how it's worked. We are doing a Tunisian simple stitch and a purl stitch and then a simple and a purl and we are rotating back and forth every um, stitch for that row and then when we start the next row we're doing it backwards. So if we started with a simple on this one we'll start with a purl on this one. Simple purl. So we're really offsetting the stitch and then the rows. So you are going to need to know how to do the Tunisian simple crochet before you learn this. So I have a video tutorial for that if you need to learn the Tunisian simple. So what we're going to do here is we are going to do our alternating stitches back and forth. So I'm going to start my very first stitch with a simple and just pull up that loop. Now when I do my purls, you want to pull your yarn to the front of your hook. Go under that next bar, then let that yarn go right back to the back. Now, yarn over and pull up a loop. And that's a purl stitch. Now you're going to do another simple. And now we're going to do a purl. So we're going to bring that yarn to the front, insert our hook, let that yarn go to the back again and then yarn over and pull up a loop. I find that it helps if I have my, my thumbnail here to hold down that purl stitch while I pull my yarn through. It helps it to not get tight. So now we do a simple, and now we do a purl. Front, under, let it fall to the back, now hook it, pull up a loop. Nice. Simple, And now purl, so bring that to the front, insert into the next bar, let it fall to the back, hook it, and finish that stitch. Now when we get to the end of the row, just like we do with regular Tunisian, we're going to go through both sides of this V of the stitch from row one, because it, it creates a nice side for the piece. So go through both sides of that. Now we are ready to do our backward pass of the Tunisian stitch. So let's do our chain one. At the very left we always do a chain one. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we get to the end of the row. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look and pull my yarn and get situated and then I'll zoom in so that we can see exactly what I'm doing. Pull my yarn, excuse me. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, when we are looking at these stitches, the shorter ones are purl stitches and it will become more evident the farther we go. But if you look, the simple stitches will always come straight out of the top of the row below it. The purl stitches will always look like it's coming from the behind. So this would be our simple, and this is our purl, because it looks like it's coming from behind. And then simple, purl, simple, purl, right? So whatever we started the last row with, we want to do the other this time. So this one we started with a simple, so we're going to do a purl in that one for the first. So we're going to start with a purl. So I'm going to pull that yarn to the front, insert, let it roll to the back, and then hook it and bring it through. Hold it with your thumbnail if that helps. So that was a purl. Now we're going to simple and purl. Simple and purl. Simple and purl. Okay. 
do a simple on this one. And now that we're to the end, we're going to go in both sides of that stitch from the last row. Lovely. Now we're ready to do our backward pass. Chain one to start that next backward pass and then pull through two until you get to the end. All right, so now if we look again, we see that we've got the first one, it looks like it's coming out from the back. So that's a purl. This one look, it looks like it's coming straight out of the top of this stitch. So that's a simple, that's a purl, that's a simple, that's a purl. So we're going to reverse that row again, or that order. So if we started this one with the purl, we're gonna put a simple in that first one. And alternate, now a purl. Now a simple. Purl. Simple. Purl. And simple. And now a purl. Get to the end, so we're going to go in both sides of that V from the previous. Keep that nice clean edge. And now we are ready for our backward pass. First one always gets a chain, and now we're going to go through two to the end. Pull my yarn. Let's do one more so we can take a look and see what we're doing. This one, we started with a simple because it's coming straight out of the top. So we're gonna do a purl there in that first bar. And alternate those stitches all the way to the end. Chain one and work all the way back to the beginning of the row. Now to fasten off or to cast off with Tunisian crochet, what we're going to do, let's say that we had crocheted the number of rows that we wanted. See how we've got that nice um, honeycomb look. It's adorable. It's so cute, this tiny little piece. So to cast off, what we're going to do is the same thing that we do with regular Tunisian. We're going to go under that first post of the row and we're just going to slip stitch. We're going to slip stitch the whole way across. And then when you get done, that leaves you in a very convenient place. If you're going to put a border on your piece, it, it leaves you right there in the corner. So you can just work right on into that border if you are planning one. So in that last one, we're gonna go on the side and slip stitch together. There we go. We are done with our little Tunisian honeycomb gauge swatch or swatch. Isn't it adorable? 
I love it. So this is how you do the Tunisian honeycomb crochet. Look for a new pattern or two on the blog on hearthookhome.com. Thanks for watching.